and I'll send you. There we go. Yeah, Thanks I got so it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I got it. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Yes. Good. So great to meet you, David. Uh, great to meet you, Stake President. Um, yeah, I see somebody has joined us uh, with an Infinix Note 10. Yeah, I don't know who that is. He's feel... a young single adult president. Okay, in the state. Oh, He's called... First counselor. Wonderful. Oh, that's have... my first counselor. Uh, you, oh. you, you should name your phone. That's okay. my first counselor. <laughs> <laughs> He's called Richard. Uh, president Brett, please introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Richard Aqua Emia. A first counselor. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Excellent. I just, I just let in Emma. So we've got a few people joining. So Emma, Emma is, up, I'll just admit them. Yep. He's trying to connect. Great. Hello, Emmanuel. Yes, hello. Good. Can you please introduce yourself? My name is Emmanuel Ansa from University Stake. I'm the young adult leader here, and I'm humbled to be part of this gathering. We are grateful to meet you. Thank you, Imano. Thank you very much for connecting. Yeah. Right, so David, I uh, know you have just a little time, so we'll go straight to it. Um, yes. We gathered to meet the state president, his counselor, and the young man president in the state. The young single adult president. Okay, young single adult president, YSA president. So, yeah. <laughs> to discuss an upcoming devotion Friday, tomorrow. Tomorrow. To, yes, yeah. tomorrow is a holiday here. Yes, 5 p.m., 5 p.m. Ghana time. Uh, we're meeting all the YSAs that initially enrolled on the medical coding program. Okay. And uh, with the challenges we have on the PEF, um, we, I discussed with the state president about the West African medical coding program, the collaboration between CareerWise and BS Africa. Yes. Uh, with the modular payment system and the possibility of a quarter payment, quarter yes. payment in a modular system. Yep. And then the remaining balance paid via salary withholding when they start working. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I discussed that with the state president. He's excited about it. So yep. with his, together with his counselors, they have put together a, a devotional, a medical coding devotional tomorrow at 5 p.m. the state. Okay. Uh, We'll be meeting all of them, discuss the new funding arrangements, uh, and then we'll start from there. So, Mr. President, uh, you meet David Jensen, CEO of uh, CareerWise. Uh, the ball is in your court. I'll finish my introductions. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Jensen, I am very excited to be with you. Thank you. And uh, we just want to go straight to the point so that we don't take much of your time. And please, uh, we, we were just approached that this is not genuine. And I believe in you because I, before I just had this joint, uh, this, this gathering, as you have heard about me, I've heard about you too. And I know a little bit about you, how generous you are, how, how passionate you are about it, the young single adult. Please, we would like you to just briefly tell us who you are and your relationship with the uh, medical coding and your readiness to help. We just want to hear from you. Oh. Because we will send this information to the young single adult to know that this is genuine. This is not anything somebody just fruitlessly, I know, put it up to dupe the young single adult of their poverty and money. So will you tell us a little bit about it? I, I will. Thank, thank you, thank President. You. I, I appreciate you reaching out and um, connecting with me today. Um, I understand that maybe an individual or maybe a few individuals have said something disparaging that yep. it was not legitimate what uh, this yep. offering is. Let me give you a little bit of background. First of all, about myself. Um, okay. I, I'm the founder uh, of a company, a large company in the United States that employed thousands of medical coders. Um, 
five years ago, I started an online education company. We're training people with the right skills and talent to work in the medical coding industry in the United States. Medical coding and billing is an enormously large uh, industry. It employs hundreds of thousands of people. There's a real need for additional people to work in it. And our thoughts were, why not West Africa? Why can't we train people and give them a job where they can work remotely off of a computer? They have internet in West Africa. They have computers. They speak English. Um, and, they, and they're smart. They can learn. And they can, they can qualify themselves for a job. So I was approached initially by some missionaries from the Africa West area who yep. knew about my background in education. And they came to me and I, I thought about it for a couple of weeks. And I'm like, I think I should help with this. I'm, a, I'm an active, faithful member of the church. I, I consider all of you my brothers and sisters. I have a deep desire to, to help and assist. So with the help of the initial help of the Africa West area, we had launched um, an idea that we would make the first three modules, anatomy, terminology, physiology, and pharmacolo pharmacology, make those three modules, which is an important foundational part of our course, let's make them available to members of the church in the Africa West area for free. Well, within three weeks, we had almost 1600 individuals. It really wasn't broadcast, I don't think very widely. 1600 students enrolled into the course. And I, I totally understand that um, the vast majority of these students were reliant upon some assistance with the cost. It, it, it's expensive to deliver and support students like that. Um, many of these students were looking to the Perpetual Education Fund of the church to support that program. And so from about early July until most recently, we've continued to try and get the support of PEF to help with funding. It seems to me that the PEF is either unable or unwilling to support the program. Some individuals who've known about our efforts for the last five months have been speaking with private donors. Um, and there has been some particular interest by some donors to help aid the cost of education and training for the students. I don't have any specific details, but it's my understanding that an initial donor is forthcoming soon and that it will at least enable us to finance and continue to place perhaps 60 or 70 of our students into the full course that will lead to their job placement at the end of that at the end of their successful passing of our final certification exam um, so um, we have not we've been waiting to know what we could and should say to all of our students but what I'm saying to you now is what I would put in a letter is that um, just be patient uh, continue to work on the course. I will tell you a significant number of the students that enrolled in the course, I think they got wind that the PEF was maybe one trying to decide whether to support the program or not. Many of them, I think, lost faith and lost interest and have not logged in or done any activity in those three modules for months now. But we do have we have roughly, I want to say there's 80 to 120 there's thereabouts of the students who are either complete with those three modules or very near to completion. Uh, those are the ones that we're going to want to support first. I kind of see a prioritization for those who get to get into the whole, whole program leading to a job as follows. It's going to be based upon number one, 
the availability of donor funds. Number two, it's gonna be based upon the date in which the students first enrolled in the program. We're gonna take them first in, first out. Number three, we're gonna evaluate whether they have been completed those three modules and the date of the completion of that. And then we'll also weigh their, evaluate their performance and that performance with that information in those three modules. Now, that's what I know at this point. Um, I will tell you, I'm working with a, a group of individuals to establish a charitable foundation. A, a charitable foundation that can receive donor funds, allocate them towards specialized training and education and job placement. We're gonna, it's gonna be really, I, I, told, um, I told the Africa area missionaries early on, I said, it won't do any good for me to put students through a program get them certified and they're ready to go to work and not help them bridge that gap to a job. So I knew right from the beginning that there was gonna be some requirement on our part to help them with the job placement portion of this process. And I still feel that way. And this foundation that we're looking at uh, setting up, in fact, we've, it's already been formed. Uh, we needed to set up a, a legal entity that could receive uh, the contributions of charitable givers and donors who want, like us, to help those individuals in West Africa who really are looking for an opportunity where they can stay and live in country, in fact, even stay at home and work from home, that's our model, um, receive the specific training and skills they need to apply their skills and trade and earn a great living that can support them, support their wife and children and families. That's our goal. Hmm. I'm satisfied, <laughs> um, but I have a request. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we just want, want to, I'm grateful for the busy schedule you have. You've made a little bit of time to, to answer the passionate question we have. However, you have set some parameters you know, to qualify people for the charitable assistance that's going to come. Yes. But yes. Uh, yeah, uh, our stake is asking for a favor. Okay. Per adventure, okay. in case some of our students or our young graduates do not meet the parameters, we, we are asking humbly, can you give us a number? Let's say five or 10 from our stake. Who will qualify? On, on charitable base, even if they did not come in first in, first out, or first get it. Can you do that for us? Just for them to be, because we have serious young single who are enthused about it. The 1,600 people who enrolled in the beginning, I bet you about, about 200 came from our stake. I know that because they were meeting in our stake center and I was monitoring them. And they lost the interest and the faith because PEF did not absorb it, as yeah. you rightly yeah. said. Yeah. But I'm yeah. making an appeal that with, with all humility and sincerity of heart, if you can give us a number that, oh, if, if, in, if your state, young Sangara, do not get in the first in to qualify for set parameters, will you please consider, say, five or 10? Because I have them, but I know they might not be the first in, first out. President, I will commit to doing that for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> then I will also get you the names. I Thank will you. Do it. I will do so it. So 10, right? 10, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, yeah. uh, well, uh, President India, do you have any question? Because Brother Jensen doesn't have much time. Young Sangara, do you have any question? Young Sangara, President. <laughs> <laughs> I just want yeah, to speak. Um, oh, go ahead. Mm. Oh, yeah. Please finish, Brother Davy. Um, oh, I, I do. Please, please go. Oh yeah, I I feel, you know, from a start of a great thing, we have to go through a lot of rough drafts, but we we hope with the selected number, after we've seen progress and the results, the output, we can use it as a model for those who may not be getting the concept very well. 
Um, and so we, we are not going to make these in our favorites, but I think having a standard of these people, we can even use them to mentor other states or other areas where this program will be enrolling towards. So I feel it's a good initiative from our end. Um, I can't think of questions right now, maybe in the later, I'll write them down and subsequent meeting, I'll be bringing them up. No, write them down and bring it to the devotion tomorrow. It will be answered. Please. And he, President, you or any of your counselors, if you have anything, please, you have my email address, I believe. Yeah, I do. I do. Send, send me a, uh, an email, please, and I'll um, I will. be happy to respond with any particulars for it that you need. Thank you. Actually, uh, yeah. I had a conversation with Elder and Sister Monk. Yes. You know them? Oh, of course. Good. Of course. And you know that, you know, the Dukes? I don't know the Dukes, no. You know the Mondragons? I do. I, I, I know the Mondragons. You know Matt Richards? You know the Matt Richards? Yes. You know the Dares? No. Okay. I have talked to a lot of people. The Ivans, Tiffany's, and so forth and so on. I know the Ivans, yes. Good. <laughs> now, what happened is, these emphasize to, to me that the area has now asked the senior couple, senior missionaries, to stay out of carry wise because mm -hmm. they, were, they are serving in the interest of the church with respect to PEF, and they are trying to persuade PEF to come into the system to assist. However, as you said, the PEF is having its own challenges. So the area presidency has requested that the senior couples stay out of this. And that if we can have this wonderful program run in our stake, they, will, they don't have anything wrong with it. It is not, more, it is not any, any scam, it is genuine, but PEF is not in it now, for now. That's Maybe good. in the near future. That's what I was told. So I was I actually, Elder Jensen, I, I was sweat to death when that brother said it is, a, it is a scam. I sweat, I was just drenched and with fear. And, and, and I, because I'm a state president, how can I mount over 200 young single adults and scam them? It's suicidal. So please, immediately- Please have that brother call me. I will be happy to speak to him. No, I, I, I wouldn't do that. He, he doesn't have a clear conscience. Okay. I can bet you, I okay. wouldn't do that. So I am okay with I am okay with you. I am grateful for your time. And I know that it's gonna work. I believe in it. I Thank trust you. my young single adults. I know what they can do. Thank they you. are very serious, they are passionate. Whatever help you have for them, please don't hesitate to come to our state. They are ready to serve, they are faithful, but we have the greatest noble challenge, which you are aware of, poverty. Yeah. But we are serious. We understand the gospel. Yes. And we are faithful. Yes. Our young single adults are faithful. They have served mission. Some are ready to get married, but because no job. So they can't get married. So this is going to be a privilege. It is. That they, it is. they can go through the training, get a, get a good job, a decent life, and then they go and keep their covenant. So I would humbly... Uh, permit me that I would never allow any person I don't trust to get in contact with. Maybe unless through other means. <laughs> I love what you said, President. Thank you. I'm grateful. President, I, do you have any, any question? No, other than how can we fail with your faith on our on our hard efforts, the hand of the Lord upon us? This yes. will be successful. It will yes. be successful. Thank you. President Embia. <laughs> President Embia, are you there? Yes, President. Now, any question Hello. for Brother Jason? Yes, please. Um, Brother Johnson, once again, welcome. Well, I just listened to what you come out with this um, medical coding. But from here, I've learned that, uh, and the request uh, the state president asked. I will just find out if the uh, return missionaries or the missionaries through them, this program has been extended to African West area, have also a slot for this opportunity. That's my question. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I understood your question about the missionaries. Yeah, you are saying that uh, through the missionaries, 
then you extend this uh, opportunity to Africa West, right? Yes. So I'm finding out if the missionaries or return missionaries have an also opportunity, like the request the state president asks, if they also have a slot for them to pursue this course. Well, uh, we, we didn't offer it specifically to return missionaries, but I think there are plenty of return, young return missionaries that are in the cohort of students when it was initially talked about. I, th I think the original 1600 students, I think there's many return missionaries in there. I don't know that they all are, but I, I would think many of them are. So it Thank means you. that you also treat all the return missionaries and uh, stu your student equally. Yes. That's right. Okay. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Brother David? Brother David Yabo? Yes, my state president. We are, we are satisfied for now because Brother Jason doesn't have much time. This time we have got from him, is a diamond. And we want to treat it as such. <laughs> well, we are grateful. Well, listen, Brother Ado Yobo, he's a good man. I've he and I have been on the phone together many times. He's pursuing some alternatives as well to help with deliver and bring meaningful education and job placement to members of your stake and throughout West Africa. So I'm grateful for him and his efforts, he and I have a good relationship with each other. We've been on the phone together many times. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I'm you grateful to have Brother him. David. Yeah, I'm grateful to have him in our stake. So whatever privileges he has, we're going to enjoy most of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but David, extend the privileges, most of them, to our stake. Thank you. I'm grateful, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Nice to visit with you. Nice. Thank you. Please kindly send a link to us so that I will. we will share the video. I will. I'll send that to both Thank of you. you. Thanks. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a wonderful Have a day. Day. Bye. day. Same to you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.